Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome back to our Planet On's playthrough. In this episode, we are going to hopefully use drill heads to get some phosphate going. Um, I've added a lot of things to our to-do list. I want to work towards acetone as a... Is it a gas or a liquid? I think it's a liquid. Um, which is made a couple different ways. I've considered this version um, which is very propene intensive and propene requires a lot of lead plates. Chromite sand is kind of difficult to get. Um, so I was actually looking at the comparison between these two versions of acetone. Um, I'm not a million percent sure which one's better. The one using a lot of propene takes a lot of lead plates a lot of chromium ore, which requires syngas, I should add, if I throw in this, um, let's see, chromium ore, then we can see we need a lot of syngas. Coal is not really that important because that's thinking I'm using burner drills, so that's not a thing. Um, so a lot of lead plates, a lot of copper plates, and a lot of syngas. So lead plates are relatively expensive, but then this version produces five phenol as an extra byproduct along with some aromatics. And we need a lot less lead and syngas. We do need a tiny bit of salt, which is not very difficult. Tiny bit of coke, some tailings, and then just some phosphoric acid. So I'm trying to decide, you know, is that 25 phosphoric acid worth the lead and copper plates and all the syngas that we're using? Because, I mean, it's like six times the amount of syngas. Um, but then 25 phosphoric acid, when we look at what that takes, I think it's this one is the one I'd be using. We do need 50 syngas for that, along with five wood and some other fairly cheap things. Some pure sand. So I kind of want to set up this way just because we're going to need phosphoric acid, we're going to need hydrogen chloride, we're going to need phenol, and we're going to need acetone. So kind of setting it up with these two combined, it gets us everything we need. There is another way to get phosphoric acid that neglects to give you the hydrogen chloride, and it actually requires more wood and pure sand and syngas, so we will not be doing it that way. The only thing this thing, the secondary method requires is, I guess, not even more energy. Why would you, why would you not do it this way? Maybe I'm missing something. Oh, sorry, I completely forgot. We need saline water. So saline water is a big piece of it, and the 10 salt is not showing up in the input because I put the salt mine in. That's right. Sorry. I knew there was a difference. We need a bunch of salt for this one to make saline water. And that's fine, because salt mines are pretty easy. So we're going to start with setting up the phosphate mine and the salt mine. So we'll run over... I cleared out this area. I had some belts running over this, so I had to move those. Um, but we'll go ahead and put the salt mine here. And this thing, it, it slams 10 units per second. I actually cannot stack items fast enough. I think this can only handle, I don't know, it can handle a full belt. So that can handle 15 items per second, and then we'll put that into a provider chest. I've run out of. So salt is something that you need in such large quantities that I almost will never need unstacked salt. But I guess I should probably... I should probably do this correctly. I can move 8.5 per second. You know what? I bet I can make it even faster if I do this. Yeah, that can move 15 items per second. If I... Move the offset around. Okay, there we go. 20 items per second. <laughs> That's insane. Okay, so we'll put that into the stacker. Oh my gosh. You can barely even see it moving. And then we'll supply that. Because I may, if I need very small amounts of salt, it's easier to just request the regular item. Because then I don't have to unstack it. But if I need large amounts of salt, I'll always want to request stacked salt. And then we need a requester chest with our densest fuel that we have, which is coke, stack of eight. 
And this whole thing consumes two megawatts of fuel. So that's not, not too bad. Actually, two megawatts is quite a bit, but one stack of eight coke is 40 megajoules, so. So we only need one of these every 20 seconds, I believe is the, the number. So we'll have both of those full in no time, and that will be all the salt we ever need. And now I want phosphate. Now phosphate goes on ancient remains, I think. If I'm remembering correctly. I thought I had some in the base. Rare earth ore. Ah, here it is. Phosphate rock. And golly, have I really screwed up this area. I even believe in the first few episodes I said something like, oh, I probably shouldn't build over these. And then I said to myself, oh, no, it's fine. I'll just move it later if I need it. And here we are. And I'm not moving it. Because there's one not too far to the north. I'm just going to use that. Though in this case, it might actually matter. I might be willing to move that stuff because we're going to need drill heads for this. Although this is 11 million and that one is only, where did it go? Uh, 377,000. So this will pretty much last forever. Selected the wrong building. Oh, just kidding. This is the wrong. Big ancient remains is different than regular ancient remains. So maybe I have to build it on this one down here. Are there any other phosphate rocks? There's sulfur up here, which is actually really important. I will want to be mining that sulfur. There's one up here. I don't know if it's big or small, though. I guess I thought that phosphate mines were all the same. So then is this one the normal phosphate mine? Yeah. So we actually do need to clear this up. OK. You know what? I think I can handle this. So we'll move that over by one square. So that makes the hot air work. Then we will get rid of all of these. This just needs to stack in a straight line. The wood can come down this way. And we'll move that power pole. And then the stone. Shoot. We need one more space. Stone will come down and go into the belt box. And then we'll have our power there. And now the wood is a problem. So we're just going to change this to that square. And we'll just get rid of that square. Call it a day. And then the wood needs to come one square over. Get rid of that power, get rid of this power, this power. We've disconnected our whole base somehow in the process. There we go. Phosphate mine. Now this guy needs drill heads and sin gas. So sin gas, thankfully enough. Let's see, four per second. How much does this actually require? I do require four per second at the most, which is 20 sin gas. Do I have a spare 20? I think I do. This is still how I'm powering um, all my glass works. I could probably use like fuel oil or something more efficient, but 
I think we'll just use the sin gas since it's right here, and if I have problems, we'll fix it later. And then we need drill heads, so we will request drill heads. I guess you can't right click settings on that. We'll just do 200, that's way more than I need, I think. So this uses 167 kilowatts. How much energy does one drill head have? Five megajoules. So this will run for six, 60, oh, six seconds. So 30 seconds per drill head, if I'm calculating that correctly. And then phosphate, we will put in the same type of stacking situation. Okay, I can stack it. Sometimes you can't stack things, so I wanted to check on that. We'll provide, and that will be all the phosphate we'll ever need. Or what it stacks to? 62. So that means 500 per stack. So we don't need that much. We'll just do two rows of each. And there we go. Oops, I just made it. Sometimes I wish that button wasn't there because I accidentally click it and it makes it daylight immediately. Well, we are getting our 10 salt per second. We only have 555,000, so that salt mine will go away probably pretty quick. But then we've got uh, another seven eight million up there so we'll have plenty of salt so drill heads phosphate salt mines and now we work towards phosphoric acid so i am going to put all this in a factory building because there's a lot of bothersome things we need for it let's just run through the checklist steam is easy i can make that anywhere wood is actually a problem i will need to make the wood inside this building which means i should actually create a new have i unlocked any new wood technology i wonder since the last time um output we want to be exactly i think that's exactly five that's a lot of wood processing units. I'm starting to get scared of what this is actually going to take. Um, so can I do this recipe? Log. So this research allows me to do tree seedlings, water, and carbon dioxide. I have an inclination to believe that that will be more effective. But we'll see. Because right now, I can mix water with ash to get six. The carbon dioxide goes a little faster, though. And that amount of carbon dioxide requires biomass, which, of course, I can never find it. There it is. I would want to come from logs themselves. So that would add 7% to the amount of logs that I need. Hmm. So this would be 107%. Maybe 107.2.1. Now let's take point 0.2. Uh, and then we need the seedlings. Oh, you know, I should have waited on that because I'm going to need the matrix solver anyway, because those require wood. And moss, of course, just requires moss. 15 seconds, 15 seconds, 5 moss, 3 moss. Is it worth some stone to speed this process up? And... One of my viewers 
in a comment reminded me that I can set the default um, factory and I can set the default active modules which I put in my own Helmod video, but I've been neglecting to do that. So that way when I select Moss in the future, I won't have to <laughs> put in the, the recipe. Uh, so I would need three Moss farms if I'm using stone along with carbon dioxide. I don't even know if the matrix solver can handle this. Looks like it, it did pretty well, actually. Um, yeah, okay, so 0.7 stone, 3.25 Moss farms. What if I do just this one. 5.5 moss farms. Is that really? Oh, I need trees in the forestry here too. If I can find them. Tree mark one. wonder when I get tree mark two. I'm going to look that up. Oh, I get a new moss recipe as well in the research that I'm already doing. However, it's a crappy one. Coarse fractions, I don't think I have. Uh, tree mark two. Looks like I get... That's a sap tree mark two. Moss mark two. I don't know, but mark two modules for these buildings are going to be a big improvement. That much I do know. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and then I'm going to just click on something. And then paste. I don't know how to make a new block without selecting a recipe for it. So I just make a block with whatever and then I fix it to be something uh, unlink output five wood and this time i wanted to try the other recipe and we're comparing them directly so the other log recipe that i might use is the one with ash the ash i think i can just import but five per second is a lot how much is my power giving me well, seven per second. So that that's if it's running at full load, but still. Um, so that ash might be kind of a problem. But for reference, if I do all of this same way as before, biomass from blogs, which are down here, Matrix solver. Oop, tree seeds. Come from wood. Okay, so this one requires less power and 5.4 ash. I mean, the power is about the same. 28 buildings versus 31 buildings. what to do. Mainly, I just want to go with the simpler one that doesn't require any inputs, so we'll do this. Um, but first I'll set up the actual process, and then we'll make our little wood farm. Wow, I need a lot more phosphate than I thought I would for 25 Phosphoric acid per second. Doesn't look like we're actually going to get 25. Maybe 25 is way more than I need. I might be overshooting. But we'll see. I will set this up in this area. Because it'll be self-contained, so it doesn't really matter where I put it. Although I do want trees to go away. Increase the power limit, we'll put phosphoric acid on the outside. Phosphoric acid 
We also want phosphine gas. And we're also going to be outputting acetone. And we'll be outputting phenol. So lots of fancy things coming out of this building. And we'll see if we can fit it all. I mean, I can fit a lot of these factory buildings. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we can fit everything in here. So apparently this used to be a sin gas building. No longer. Um, so I think I'm going to have the phosphate rock come in. And we'll actually just share a chest. Oops, I did not mean to craft one of those. So we'll actually just have a chest here. And then that will transfer to this chest. And the phosphate rock will come out into the waiting arms of one, two, four jaw crushers. And we'll go on one side of the belt, because that's all I need. They need two input phosphate rocks, which sideways inserter can handle. Probably go on this end of things. Um, okay, so those both have in, this guy has in, that one has in. Okay, so inputs are set, and then the output is one of each per second. And we want to go on to the bottom side of the belt. So the bottom side of the belt, the bottom side of the belt, the bottom of the belt, the bottom of the belt. Okay. So we are crushing our phosphate rocks into powdered phosphate rocks with stone coming out as a byproduct. Oh. Silly me. I should do the version of this that uses stone in the moss because I have stone coming out for free from the phosphate. So that's easy. Uh, so we change our moss recipe to be the one that uses stone. And that saves me a little bit of, I think everything, 6.34 versus 6.45. I mean, yeah, it means I need to make a, so fewer logs, less moss, less everything. Because I'm using the logs for biomass to make carbon dioxide, so we need less carbon dioxide. Okay, now for the kicker is we need a lot of pure sand. Did I plug in the wrong recipe? I did. I should delete this one. This one does have stone output still, but uh, yeah, I want the one that gives me hydrogen chloride. Okay, so I don't need four jaw crushers. I only need 2.01. It's like, it feels slightly wrong. Like, shouldn't that be exactly five? Shouldn't this be exactly four? These numbers feel slightly off. What if I said, it's not even letting me set the output. What if I said 25? 24.9999. There we go. That makes my eyes a lot happier. Okay, so now we're not dealing with horrid decimals. So we can't have exactly two jaw crushers. So we'll move this all the way over here. Still do the same stuff. So we crush the phosphate rocks, the stone, and now nicely go out this side of the building. 
We need pure sand coming in. Come in through this chest. And I also need ash. Did I know that? Looks like I have it right here shown. I must have forgotten about that. Um, okay, we'll just balance the chest. So we'll have ash and pure sand coming in. And syngas, I could be making. Hmm. 32 syngas feels like a very small amount. When it's all said and done, can I make that easily from wood? Is the question. I know there's a recipe that uses wood. I guess it's the coal gas from wood. So then the question becomes, if I have wood, let's just do it this way, uh, filter by ingredient, this one. So let's say I have one wood. How much sin gas do I get out of it is the question. And the answer is 13. Oh, nope, just kidding. I forgot about the coal. Coal also goes. And the coke also turns into it. So one wood per second plus some oxygen can turn into 48 sin gas. Assuming you're using up all the byproducts. I only need 52 sin gas. So if I just made six wood per second, I could make the sin gas, you know, on site. But considering how much easier I can make it from raw coal, I think I'm just gonna import the sin gas. We already make tons of sin gas for our power plant. I might just have an overflow on sin gas come to the rest of the base. Cause honestly, most of the time I'm gonna be consuming less than I need. So we'll just import the sin gas probably up here. And then I need four high pressure furnaces. I guess right here. And then we'll have two filter inserters going into un and stackers. We'll have those now put to the right. That looks wrong. Uh, and then we'll put those on two sides of the belt. So that will be uh, shucks, eight per second. That's a problem. So we actually need an entire belt for pure sand. So we'll just do that here. And then we can do half a belt each for uh, the other stuff. I'm gonna move this over one square or two squares. Give myself some breathing room. Um, so then this one will be our pure sand. Let me get sand gas set up before I do anything else. Because pipes always get in the way. So then our pure sand will set up here. This guy will come down, meet up with the phosphate powder stuff, and that will come up. Okay, and then we need two pure sand, which we need a fast inserter for. And in this particular case, we use a sideways inserter.
Uh, yeah. So I think we're good. And all the inputs there. You need to be pure sand. Stack of eight. You need to be ash. Stack of eight. We will reduce the update rate on that chest. And this makes phosphorus acid, which is very different than phosphoric acid. And if I was a chemist, I would know the difference. I'm not a chemist, I'm a mathematician. So to me, those sound almost exactly the same, but I'm pretty sure there's a reason they're different. Um, and then what else do I want in this building? I could do the whole sand thing. I mean, I want to make efficient use of space and we have more space in this building. But this one needs wood and steam, which I'm not sure if I want to make all of this in one building. So I think I'm just going to export the phosphorus acid. Out the top left here. Also, given the flow rates, I'm thinking I should probably just use a regular pipe because this is never going to be more than 20 per second. So waiting for those import export pipes, those have a store, you know, they're 2.5 thousand in one single pipe. So that that's just a lot of um, what do you call it? Just uh, buffer. That's the word. That's a lot of buffer that I don't know if I want, but I will make the saline water in here. I think I think I'll do that. That I can do pretty easily. Because we can just put those there, put a pump jack. And then I can import the salt from. I think I'll just move this up one. And then I'll import the salt into this chest. This will have a filter of phosphorus rock. Sorry, phosphate rock. And then we'll have a filter inserter taking from there. That's still five per second on salt stack of eight. And then we'll just have that go into a little unstacker. And then we'll have that flow out through a loader. Run up vertically. These can handle up to five salt per second. Bam. Saline water. Now this one does need to be one of the high high volume pipes. So that's a hundred per second. Because this can theoretically handle up to 100 every two seconds, so 50 per second. Because the pipe can fill up and then it will output all 100 of its contents. In in reality, it's a little bit slower because, like, let's say this is 100. This will not quite get to 100 by the time. Though it might since this is trying to dump its contents. So I'm not actually sure how it works. But since it's not balancing... Um, it can output a full 100. It'll take everything in this pipe and put it in the other pipe. Okay, so we've got everything set up. We need to handle the requests, which I can at least start on. The whole wood is going to be a problem, but I'll grab a few hundred wood just to kind of get the ball rolling. And we'll probably make the wood plant in the next episode, maybe, which I also am going to need more trees, I'm realizing. I took down my my setup that was making infinite trees, and I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, okay, so I need two requester chests. This one needed... Well... I should probably unstack... Wow, I have a lot of bots delivering. I should probably unstack the phosphate inside here, because that'll make the requesting simpler. So instead, we will do this with phosphate rock stack of eight into a 
stacking belt box, and then we'll put that onto this belt onto the left side. That can handle seven per second at that angle. That's really nice. Okay, so then we can just do stacks of things into these two requests. So here we'll do salt, stack of eight, and boss, fate, rock, stack of eight. And then this top one was ash, stack of eight, and we do not need 125. And pure sand. And pure sand, we actually need a lot. I'm going to say 120 because we need 8 per second. And I think it might take a minute or two for the pure sand to get here because it's coming from all the way down in this area of the base. Which I think I have... Yeah, I have plenty of pure sand, but... I don't know if I have 8 per second. So my pure sand resolve may be questioned. The good news is I don't know if I'll need this much phosphoric acid. Really for anything. Um because a hundred acetone can make a hundred organic solvent. And organic solvent can make what was I planning on using that for? Do I even remember? Oh goodness. Oh yeah, niobium, that's right. So we need organic solvent for niobium. And we need it for some other stuff, primarily this copper coating stuff, industrial solvent, Kevlar, and a bunch of other stuff I've never seen before. And then there's a rubber version, but I'm planning on skipping that and going straight to this one that uses styrene and ethylene, which is methane-based. Because that gets you a ton of rubber. So I'm planning on going straight to that when we improve rubber. Skipping go and... And not collecting $200, so to speak. Um, so it looks like the saline water is good, and we just need sin gas as an input. That's right. So we'll do the output pipe right here. Hook those up. And then input right here. Again, we only need 32 per second, so maybe I should use the smaller pipe, but... Do I have sin gas anywhere near? I have it right here. I'm just going to keep using the same sin gas setup. We seem to have enough. If I run out, I run out, and I can get more. But I think I'm tired of producing the resources for everything separately. Because this is kind of more of a main boss style, where it's like, well, I'll produce sin gas in one place, and when I need more, I need more. I'll add it in. Anyway. Okay, so that should be working. Input, reduce rate. Uh, yeah, we're running. We're creating phosphorus acid already. Beautiful. Okay, so then we need another building. Which I'll have linked up here. I'm not making call gas. And this building will take the phosphorus, acid, wood, steam, saline. Just coming out here. And we'll make oxygen. We'll say the wood comes in from the side. I think I'll have a chest with uh, oak stack of eight to make the steam. I got the saline water. 
So we've got 2.5 of these, which is also known as 3. I want to space it out by 2 between each of them. We'll connect phosphoric acid out to here. It's actually really convenient that the underground belt spans the whole building. This is coming in. Saline water will come in and go to the side. And steam, I decided, is going to be made. I think a single boiler can handle 60 steam per second, so that's actually a perfect ratio. Convenient. You need space for a pump jack, though. There is a water well mod that has much smaller pump jacks for water, but since Pynodons supplies one to me, by default I feel a little bit cheaty using that. Uh, and then we've got steam coming around and up. From here. Okay, so that'll be steam. The wood will come in the side. And each one needs two wood per second. Technically not a full two though. Like these three inserters together should be able to handle five, but I will speed them up slightly by going at a an angle there so they can they can all handle two per second. And that handles wood, steam, and phosphorus acid. So what's interesting about this is I want to provide both resources. Because phosphine gas, I think, is used in something. Something else. Yeah, it's used here for these lightly N-doped silicone wafers, which is for circuits two. And then I guess in something called quantum dots, which I'm never getting that far. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Green and yellow science? I have no idea what that looks like. Anyway, um, I hopefully will get to this part. I'm hoping to make it to red circuits at some point, but we'll see how far this playthrough goes. <laughs> I'm hoping to get to at least 50 or 60 episodes, but red circuits might be like 100 or 200 episodes in so we'll, we'll see if i have the endurance i'm still enjoying the playthrough a lot but all that being said we want to build some what are they called tanks i think probably 65 let's do this one 70 000 seems good for each oh these are interestingly shaped storage tanks. I'm having regrets now. Uh, I guess we'll just do there and there. And then we'll have the two mixers. Is that what these are called? They are called mixers. Um, Wow, I'm out of pipes. I guess I needed a bunch to craft the buildings I just made. Uh, so then we've got our phosphine, phosphine. Then I also want phosphine maybe 70,000 is too much. If I'm only making five phosphine per second, then 100 seconds is 500. So three minutes is a thousand. 
So we probably actually want something more along the lines of the 10,000 tank. That feels better. So I actually want to do this. And I will only go this direction if there's overflow. And I will pump directly into the tank. So that way all phosphine, I forgot to connect uh, any of the phosphine outputs apparently. Okay, so all of the phosphine gas will be pumped directly into this tank. And then we have phosphoric acid, which is connected and already set up to go. And I should move this over by one. So that I can then have the phosphoric acid be pumped into its own tank. But then what's interesting is you can change phosphine gas into phosphoric acid and hydrogen chloride. So I will need some clever circuitry connecting all of these things. Um, I am just gonna vent the oxygen because that's just power that I'm wasting, essentially. Not too worried about that. And then I will connect up whatever this is called, hydrogen chloride. And hydrogen chloride, I think, so this is where you start running into some questions that are actually really important for long term. Because what I can do is I can just set up the hydrogen chloride to go outside this building and this building into a big tank. And then anything that's overflow, I just vent it and not even worry about it. And what that means is this plant will be set to produce phosphine gas or phosphoric acid, but if I don't need either of them, this plant will stop producing and I might run out of hydrogen chloride. I could set up complicated circuits so that if I'm short on hydrogen chloride, it'll dump extra of both of these. And if it's short on one of these, it'll dump the extra. So like it'll always produce all of these three things. The problem is that might be really inefficient, um, but it's an option. Not really sure what to do here. Not sure at all. I am gonna connect up another tank here though. And a pump. Actually, I don't need a pump there. Okay. Well, let's at least finish getting this stuff hooked up. And we'll probably barrel it outside. But yeah, like I might have a gas vent here, you know, and I could put a pump here with a circuit condition. That says if phosphoric acid is less than 8,000, then we can overflow into a pump, which would mean I would only burn off phosphine gas if, yeah, I think that works, if the amount of phosphoric acid I have is low. 
because otherwise I would start backing up on phosphine gas. You guys will have to tell me in the comments if I'm making some mistakes here, but I think this works. Like if this is less than 9,500 and we have a pump going into this building, so we can rest assured that uh, all available phosphoric acid is being pumped into here with 100% force. So this will fill up to 10,000. Um, I also want to make sure I'm always using the phosphoric acid prior, so this will be a top up here, like so. So then within this network, it will always receive the phosphoric acid from these three first. And then if there's still room, these three will be running. Which should all be enough to pump up to 10,000 phosphoric acid into here. This pump will only run if phosphoric acid is low. If phosphoric acid is low, this should automatically be running using phosphine gas. I think this is all gonna work. Um, and I don't think I need to worry about venting phosphoric acid unless... Do I? Do I need a sinkhole? This is see this is where I start getting confused on circuit conditions. Like, do I need a sinkhole that will get rid of phosphoric acid in order to make room for phosphine gas? And for some reason I can't figure out if I do or don't. Because let's say we have 10,000 phosphoric acid and then we start using our phosphine gas and it gets siphoned out and our phosphoric acid is still full. Then we do want to be able to vent a little bit of phosphoric acid. But we do vent phosphine gas down to 80% if phosphoric acid is low. So we would only want to vent phosphoric acid with an overflow, of course. That's important. Because that means we'll only be venting phosphoric acid if we have more than 80% in the first place. And if we have less than, uh, let's see, I need more cable. I think if I have less than 7,000 phosphine. So that would only vent if we have an excess of phosphoric acid and a lack of phosphine gas. This one does the same thing. A lack of phosphoric acid and an excess of phosphine gas. So that, but then if they're both full, we should be fine. Because these will only pump out if the other one's low. I still have this weird feeling like this should maybe be less than 7,000 as well. So they each only pump if the other one's less than 7,000, but they themselves are greater than 8,000. Who knows, that uh, that might end up being super wasteful, but we'll at least leave it that way for now. I'm not necessarily the best with circuits all the time. But yeah, and then we need our hydrogen chloride actually to be that top left because it's a very specific hole going to the outside of the base. So that needs to be here. Okay. Well, there's definitely still a bit more work to be done with our wood. Um, what's it called? Yeah, just wood. We need to get the five wood per second in here. Um, and then we can work towards acetone and everything else. That's why I'm doing phosphoric acid in the first place, but we do want to barrel it. 
and then we'll get hydrogen chloride as well. So I think I'll keep working on this in the next episode, but uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I will see you next time.